Nikola's hydrogen strategy is about to take off. We've recently seen some major developments from one of the most hated hydrogen companies in the United States that show us that their hydrogen business strategy is about to be one of the most revolutionary for the decarbonization race in America. Don't get me wrong, hydrogen is still a very nascent technology, but at the end of the day, to make big change, you need to invest in innovative technologies when nobody else believes in them, because that's the time when you get the best risk versus reward. And with the launch of the Nikola Trey fuel cell in Europe, we're starting to see some major investments from Nikola in the US to catalyze their hydrogen infrastructure and to set in the foundations for a revolutionary ecosystem and business model strategy. And those investments are exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, I want to address an interview that was recently conducted with one of Nikola's hydrogen engineers who discussed Nikola's plan to roll out stations in the United States over the next five years. Now, there's been a lot of criticism about Nikola's claims in the past about how cheaply they can manufacture hydrogen and how many stations they'll be able to build over the next five years. But we obviously know that we've had a big debacle within the company with Trevor Milton, and we're witnessing a historic recession, which means that the company is not going to be able to raise any near the amount of money it raised in 2020. And that investment is overall going to be lower from external investors. And so it should be very little surprise that Nikola's hydrogen strategy was put on the back burner for the past year, as they were trying to ramp up production of the Nikola Trey battery and the fuel cell prototypes. But even though the company had its hands full and made little progress on groundbreaking with hydrogen refueling stations, they did make some very important and critical back end investments to ensure they have the right real estate and the right equipment to be able to pursue this strategy over the next five years. And as you can see, the biggest one of these investments was a recent 900 acre purchase in Buckeye, Arizona, which is going to mark their first hydrogen hub in the United States. Now, for those that don't know what a hydrogen hub even means, Nikola's initial strategy for hydrogen production is using a hub and spoke model in the Western United States. The idea here is that because the trucking channels and routes in the United States are so fixed and consistent, Nikola can take advantage of those by placing their hydrogen refueling stations at critical and important locations where not only can they get cheap electricity supply to make that hydrogen cheaply, but they can also increase the third party optic for that hydrogen for other use cases like glass refining and steel manufacturing. And as long as Nikola invests and controls the right assets, they'll be liable to a lot of the fees and charges that those third party off tickers will have to pay for that hydrogen energy supply. And the best part is that because Nikola is also simultaneously making their own fuel cell trucks, they're also creating demand for that hydrogen, which will solve the major chicken and egg problem we've always had when developing hydrogen ecosystems. And for those that are screaming right now saying that hydrogen is too expensive and it is inefficient to use, the cost per kilogram right now is actually competitive with diesel on a total cost of ownership basis. And something that is not even being close to priced into Nikola's valuation is the fact that the Inflation Reduction Act that was officially passed and signed by Biden will provide a $3 per kilogram incentive for producers of green hydrogen, which will make diesel more expensive than green hydrogen. Let me say that once more for the people in the back. Green hydrogen, the fuel that many people have called extremely inefficient and expensive, will officially be cheaper than diesel with the incentives that the Inflation Reduction Act is proposing. And this right here is something that's going to act as a massive tailwind for businesses like Nikola Motors, who are tying together stakeholders in America in an untouched hydrogen market, particularly in Western US. Now say what you want about this Inflation Reduction Act, but I think this is the most important bill that has been passed for the past 10 years, because this is going to channel investments 
in the right areas in clean energy and sustainable transportation, which is something we need to focus on if we want to seriously tackle climate change, which is going to wipe out humanity faster than anybody right now predicts. And the killer combination here with Nikola is not only are they going to be a manufacturer of electric vehicles, but they're also going to be investors in hydrogen assets, which are both going to benefit from this Inflation Reduction Act and overall scaling in their technologies. I don't think people are fully understanding this about Nikola's business strategy. Yes, they're dipping their toe into both sides of the coin, but they're doing this using an asset light model and based on financing options that are very flexible for the end users. And yes, it requires a lot of upfront capital and a lot of risk on Nikola's side. But that is exactly why this company exists. Their goal is to tie together the right stakeholders and bring the product to market at the right time so that the hydrogen ecosystem can gain some traction. And because Nikola is also an OEM that manufactures their own trucks in house without the use of a contract manufacturer, they're also going to be eligible for the 30% advanced energy project credits with their Nikola Coolidge facility in Arizona. And that's followed by a $10 per kilowatt hour advanced manufacturing tax credit for producing battery modules in house which is obviously something Nikola is now going to be eligible for because they recently acquired Romeo Power. And obviously, we're also going to have a $40,000 commercial clean vehicle tax credit for vehicles that are purchased starting next year. And you know what the best part about this is that without the Inflation Reduction Act, the cost of hydrogen is already falling to a trajectory of $1.50 per kilogram by 2030, because obviously electrolyzer capacity is ramping up by 50 fold and the demand for green hydrogen as a fuel is also going up as decarbonization and ESG mandates pressure companies to cut emissions. And a lot of companies are properly realizing that hydrogen is the only effective way to decarbonize heavy duty industrial and transportation applications, which is why they're investing crazily today so that they can reap the rewards in the future. And let's be honest, we've already seen how difficult it is for the electric grid to handle battery cars this summer season. And hydrogen is going to be one of the things that's going to allow to offset and reduce stress on that exact grid, because obviously you can store green hydrogen fuel for as long as you want and discharge it for a very extended period of time, unlike with batteries. And although this technology is not cost effective on paper today, it does not mean it won't be cost effective in five years as well, because that is exactly how every innovative technology takes place and gets into mass adoption. But obviously, guys, that is just my opinion. So let me know your thoughts about Nikola's recent announcements down in the comment section below.